Hi guys, uh, hello, I'm back, my name is Edazar, and there is another class of English at Time Lingua. Well, today we're today we going to continue our conversation, our discussion about job swap. We had a, one class dedicated to this very topic, but today we will mm, keep on discussing it a little bit, we'll do some other exercises. So, we have a lot of things to do tonight. It's kind of late, but I hope students will come and we'll have another good class of English. So, um, and as usual, the first student to come up is Vitali. Hello to you, Vitali. How are you feeling today? Hello to you, Svitazar. I'm feeling good, very good. Great, okay. So, um, very good, despite the fact that it's kind of late and I guess you have been working the, the, all the day round, so still you feel good. No, I I don't working. <laughs> ah, I haven't I, been working. I haven't been working. Good, that's nice. Okay, uh, still that is why that is why you feel great. You don't feel yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> that is why. Yes. I see. That's good. So you're lucky. You have a day off. Oh, hello, to you, Mikhail. How are you feeling today? Uh, Mikhail, hi. I'm fine. Hi. Hello. hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay, good. So, what's up? What's new with you? Are you ready? <laughs> with the <piece> <laughs> uh, I, I just, um, before the lesson, I try to find some news. <laughs> okay, you are in the process of looking for some pieces of news. There is not really a good thing to do to get ready um, for the class uh, at the beginning of the class. You should have get uh, get ready, and I know beforehand, not at the class. Okay, and before we have, sorry. Before the classes, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat the last sentence? Well, I, I said to, to you that you uh, should better get ready for the class beforehand, not at the beginning of the class. The, the class has already started, and you are looking for some pieces of news. No, no. Don't uh, expose uh, me for the last thing. Uh, read some articles uh, in, in the middle of the day, maybe. Uh, how, how to say it? Uh, you are in the middle of the afternoon. afternoon. Oh, good. Afternoon, afternoon time. Good afternoon, okay. Lunch time. And, uh, today is main in the. Uh, 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 it's like in the uh, internet. Bad news. <laughs> what? Sorry? Bad news, yes. <laughs> no bad news. <laughs> Uh, manager, um, um, it's a director of Yandex. It's uh, Arkady wanted to uh, change uh, for another person. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, you should you should work as a reporter, like uh, break news, like a piece of news should be you know represented in a very good way. That is why I, I I'd like you to consult English uh, sources, English speaking sources. Okay. Mm -hmm. so if you look for some pieces of news, look for English uh, sources. Okay. So let's uh, greet um, uh, other students, uh, Valentina and Julia. Hello to you. How are you feeling, girls? Valentina, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. What about you, Julia? Um, I don't think I, I've met you before, so hello to you. How are you feeling? Hi, guys. Uh, hello, I'm back. Okay, Hi. enough. It's okay. Lots of um, okay, once again, this very problem. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, could you tell it? Just tell it in an English. In English. Uh, I, I don't know. No, no, so come on, I guess it's uh, 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 even in Russian. Could you, could you close uh, another window? Okay, say it in English because I guess the student will not understand. As usual, the first students <laughs> okay, say it please loudly in English, in Russian. Смотрите, у кого открыта вторая ссылка, Юлия, Юлия, закройте, пожалуйста, не лишнее окошко, потому что. Okay, well, we'll, we'll listen to the first at the beginning of the class. It's it's not Maybe in Yulia. It's Valentina. Yeah, Valentina. Like <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Who who is supposed to be? Hello. 
Okay, I can wait. I don't know who 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 is yours. Yes, it was Valentina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see. Well, it's really a very um widespread how to to put it, not mistake, but uh, uh, tradition, I would say. And uh, well, it's a long time here. I told you that it, 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 it's a yeah, but, but it's very fun. I know yeah. to put a kind of a instruction how to use, how to join a bilingual discussion because um, every time it takes some time and it's really a little bit annoying, you know. <laughs> okay. So okay, good. So now let's continue. Um, so I actually I, I wanted to agree to to meet Julie because the first time. I can hear, see her at my class, and also, well, uh, Valeri, hello to you. How how are you feeling today? I'm fine. I'm do, I'm doing quite well. And you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, it's the first time I can see you in my class. Well, nice to meet you. Where do you come from? I come from Moscow. Good. Okay. Uh, how long have you been learning English? Uh, since I was 16. Okay. Good. So, um, and where do, do you learn English for? A job, traveling, just for yourself? Well, for every purpose, for job, for traveling, for uh, reading and uh, watching movies in, in the regional. Okay, that's great. Okay, good. So, I, as far as I can see, your English is pretty good. Have you been to some foreign countries? Have you been abroad, maybe? I've been abroad, but not uh, to English-speaking countries, unfortunately, not yet. Okay, I see. And where have you been? I've been to Greece, uh, Egypt, China, France, yeah, mm -hmm. but actually it's pretty tough to get uh, an American or British visa, so I haven't uh, still tried to get to obtain a visa to that country, I to see. those countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, and uh, do you speak any other foreign languages? I speak a bit of German, and I'm really uh -huh. looking forward to finding some German classes on this website. <laughs> Have you heard that, Mihail? Uh, Valeria is looking forward to, to having the possibility to learn German here. Well, I, I'm teaching French. If you wish, you can join my classes of French. Not uh, German. By the way, yeah, by the way, I, I don't uh, speak French at all, but my wife uh, speaks some French, and I guess that she can have the right to join French classes from my well, account. You're welcome. Yeah, but usually I give classes of French on Sunday, so if she really wishes, so she's welcome. Okay. Good. Thank you. Well, um, nice to meet you again. And well, uh, so we got another student, Julia. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello to you. Nice My to meet name, you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Where do you come from, Julia? I'm from. I live in England now. Really? Good. Yeah. Good for you. But where do you come from? I mean, where were you born? I am from Russia. I am from Perm. Mm -hmm. Now I live in Birmingham. I see. Okay. And so what are you doing there? Like working, having some free time on vacation, or you living there like on? Yeah, I need to uh, learn English for life, my life. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So that is why you went to England to master. Uh, to master your English. Good. Okay. So, Althea, hello to you. Hello. How are you feeling today? Smiling fine. as usual. So yeah, fine. Thank you. That you feel great as usual, don't you? Yeah. Glad to see you smile again. Okay. And uh, hello to Evgeny. Are you here? Or well, the microphone is off, I guess. Evgeny isn't here for now. Okay. So, guys, uh, today we're going to talk about job swap part two. We started this discussion last time and today we will discuss a little bit more. Um, but uh, first of all we will discuss a bit of grammar, uh, gerunds and infinitives. Well I guess you know how to use them but we will revise a little bit and do some exercises. And after that we will listen to some records and also we will have the opportunity to learn some expressions with gerunds. But first, I'd like to ask you a question. What do you like doing and what do you hate doing? Uh, so, uh, Vitali, what do you like doing? I like sporting, running. I like running, yes, exactly. Mm, 
like running, okay. What uh, what do you hate doing? So um, something he or she um, likes doing and hate. I hate I hate to waste time. <laughs> wasting time. What is for wasting you wasting time? time? It's uh, say, like, sitting. It's sitting on front of a computer and do nothing. <laughs> doing nothing. Okay. Doing nothing. Do you ever do that? Uh, yes. Yes. I I do it um, very often. Really? Well, if you don't, if you hate doing it, why do you do it pretty often? I don't know. It's a problem. It's a modern problem <laughs> for <all> people. <laughs> like just sitting in front of of your laptop, your computer, and. No. Looking at it, carrying it. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> just <laughs> he. Uh, it's 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 uh turn off my computer and is uh, walk walk and uh, I of course uh, uh, use uh, Facebook or something. Okay, like. there is some kind of a wasting time. I see. Yes. Okay. Well, um, Valeri, what about you? What do you like doing and what do you hate doing? Well, I like uh, traveling. And um, relaxing at uh, different hotels in Egypt or Turkey, mm -hmm. and watching thrillers or some ghost movies in the in, in the original in English. Good. And as uh, about hating, um, I hate uh, doing some manual work, you know, with my hands because I muscle it. Work. Yeah. You don't need to do in manual work. Manual, manual work. Mm -hmm. Well, you said that you like to travel in. Why do you like traveling? I like uh, meeting new people, getting new impressions, uh, <laughs> tasting some uh, food I haven't tasted before. Good. Uh, and uh, relaxing and doing nothing. Well, uh, besides uh, doing some sport like beach volleyball or playing soccer if I have such an opportunity. Yeah. I see. Okay, thank you. Valentina, what about you? What do you like doing and what do you hate doing? Uh, I like cooking very much. Uh, it's my hobby. Really? Uh, I, when I have a free time, I cook a lot uh, for my okay. relatives. Do you cook for yourself or for friends? Uh, for my relatives. Relatives? Relatives, yes. Mm, I see. I guess they are happy to have you as a, I don't know, as a relative. Well, um, you, you, when you say relatives, uh, who are they? Your cousins, brothers, sisters, parents? My, my father, my his wife, my brother, my husband. Okay. Have you got a big family? Uh, yes, I have a big family. I, okay. Good. I live Good. with my. When you cook for your for your relatives, what kind of feelings do you have? What do you feel? Does it make you feel tired a little bit? Because you've got a big family to cook for all the family. It's pretty tiresome, isn't it? Uh, when they like my food, um, I feel happy. <laughs> okay. okay, I see. So, and I see. and what what do you hate doing? Uh, I don't know. I can't say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, maybe there is nothing that you would hate, but I guess everyone doesn't like at least doing something. But okay, you'll think a little bit. If you remember of anything, you'll let us know a little bit later. Alfie, what about you? What do you like doing and what do you hate doing? Uh, usually it, uh, it uh, depends on uh, what season. I mean, if, uh, if, it's, yes, if it's winter, I uh, like uh, skiing, skating. Good. If it's uh, when summer, I like swimming. Mm -hmm. Or uh, meeting with my friends uh, on the air. Mm -hmm. Good, meeting your friends in the open air. Okay, and what do you, don't you like doing, or what do you hate doing? Uh, and it's, I, I hate doing it, it's like more str stronger, mm -hmm. you put more emotions in it. I hate uh, getting up early morning. <laughs> okay, I, I guess uh, I would share this with you. I mean, I, I hate waking up early as well, because I, I don't like going to bed early, but sometimes I have to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mikhail, what about you? What do you like doing and what do you hate doing? Okay, uh, I like uh, to read a book. Uh, 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 sorry, so my question was, what do you like... Sorry, uh, that noise. <laughs> Uh, well, my, my, my neighbors decided to, I don't know, to do some work at night, so to bore the neighbors. I'm sorry for that, I hope. 
they will stop. So, uh, I, what do you like doing? After like, you should use the gerund, actually. That is the topic of our class today. And so, that is why I ask you this very question. Mm -hmm. uh, I like uh, reading the books. Reading books. And uh, I hate maybe uh, spend, uh, sp sp spend time for cooking. I hate spending time cooking. Spend the time for cooking. You should visit Valentina. She would be happy to cook for you, maybe. <laughs> if, you, if, if you like her dish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you should say that you are you know, like, a, like a cousin of hers. She, and she must believe you. Because mm -hmm. if you are not a relative, she won't cook for you. Right, Valentina? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. And Julia, what do you like doing and what do you, do you hate doing? I like drawing and painting. Mm. I like, yeah. Are these your paintings in your photo? Yeah, this oh. is my painting. My Very nice. My, I like the colors. I had uh, my exhibition in Birmingham. Okay, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, when you paint, um, how do you feel? What do you feel like? What kind of feelings do you have? Are you inspired? I, you... I like drawing uh, flowers and... Uh, <laughs> and I can see some portraits as well. Yeah, this is some portrait. My flowers portrait. and portraits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and what is the source of inspiration for you, Julia? Sorry? What is the source of inspiration for you? What inspires you to paint? What do uh, you wish to paint? Inspires. Inspires. What inspires you? I mean, what makes you want to uh, paint? Uh, I want uh, my... I want to paint my husband. <laughs> portrait my husband. Okay, so you want to, to paint your husband's portrait, okay? So we can say that your husband is a kind of a source of inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah, inspiration. You haven't heard that word, have you? Inspiration. Well, source of inspiration is like some, uh, uh, how to put it, I don't know. Something that pushes you towards painting, something that makes you want to keep on doing that, you know? That's it. Okay, this, this noise starts bothering me. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, well, uh, translation, no translation, try to understand the meaning of the word. <laughs> Thank you for the translation, but still. Okay, good. Thanks for your sharing, like, what you like doing and what you hate doing. I actually asked you these questions, not just like that, because we're going to uh, do some exercises, and we will mm, need to understand something. Just let me send you the link. So first of all, we will start uh, from grammar part. <clears throat> Here it goes. So have the document downloaded, please. And we will start when everyone gets the file. Yes. OK. So um, first of all, we will discuss, we'll examine a little bit the table I prepared for you. There is grammar gerunds and infinity. Yeah. There are, so there are some rules when we use gerunds and we, when we use infinitive. First of all, gerunds, how do we form it? There is the bare infinitive, like verb plus in form, like cooking, skiing, uh, watching, running. There were some examples mentioned in your, um, in your actual examples. So the first rule, where according to you should use the gerund, is the follow, as follows. First rule is after prepositions and phrasal verbs. And we've got the example, I'm very good at remembering names. And another one, she's given up smoking. What does it mean, she's given up smoking? Does it mean she likes smoking? Where's the idea of this sentence? She's given up smoking. Uh, Althea. Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, what is the idea of she's given up smoking? Does it mean yeah. that she likes smoking, she adores smoking? No, it means that uh, he, she doesn't like smoking. 
she doesn't like Navy anymore. Maybe she likes, but she cannot, or she doesn't want anymore because it's bad for her. So she stopped smoking. Yes, stopped. stopped. She stopped okay. doing that. Okay, she had to give up. And uh, I'm very good at remembering names, I guess. That's um, pretty clear. Good. So after prepositions and phrasal verbs, rule number two, as the subject of a sentence. So you can use the gerund as the subject of a sentence and an example given. Eating out is quite cheap here. So eating out means uh, eating at home or eating at your friend's place, eating at Valentina's house. What does it mean? Eating not out. at home. Not at home. Eating Anywhere, out. just not at home. Mm -hmm. Not at home. Somewhere else, but not at home. Good. So here, as you can see, eating out, there is a gerund, and it is used at the subject of the sentence. Number three. After some verbs, for example, hate, spend, don't mind. I don't mind getting up early. That's, uh, uh, that's clear that Althea wouldn't say this sentence because she hates getting up early. And who um, wouldn't mind getting up early? Who likes getting up early? I am. Um, I do. I like, I do, sorry, yes, I, I do. You say, I do. Okay, so uh, you, you like getting up early. Uh, and, but you don't like uh, going up to, uh, not going up, what I say, sorry, uh, going to bed uh, late, do you? Do you like uh, going to bed late, everybody? It depends on uh, if I, if you uh, television some football games, so I will watch it, but uh, when it's some uh, programs or what, of course, I uh, suppose to go to the bed. Mm, to bed early, okay, I see. So uh, there is one more thing. If uh, very often you must uh, get up uh, early morning, what about you, well, uh, Vitali? About Vitali. Uh, what? What? Please. Every what, morning. Yeah, I, I get up early morning every day. Mm -hmm. At five o'clock in the morning. No, no, no. At six, at seven. It depends on my work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 5 a.m., you can say 6 a.m., not to say in the morning, just 5 a.m., 6 a.m., mm-hmm, okay, good. Um, well, that's really quite early to get up at 6, 5, oh, that's awful for me. Good, okay, so three rules. First, after preposition, phrasal verbs, two, as the subject of a sentence, and three, after some verbs, for example, hate, spend, and don't mind. Um, next uh, little explanation here, they give us common verbs which take the gerund include enjoy, hate, finish, like, love, mind, practice, spend, stop, suggest, and phrasal verbs like give up, go on, and so forth. So what does it mean to go on? Go on. What's the meaning of their words? Continue. Continue. That's right, okay, good. Uh, so uh, is that clear? Is the first part clear? No questions? Yes, it's clear. No, okay, it's clear, no questions uh, so far. Okay, next part. Use the infinitive. Well, infinitive plus particle two. After adjectives, and we've got an example. My flat is easy to find. Where in this sentence an adjective? Easy. Easy, that is an adjective. So for that reason, we use infinitive. My flat is easy to find. Rule number two, to express a reason or purpose. He is having money to buy a new car. Well, where can we find the reason? Ask the question. Mm -hmm. To so buy a new car. Sorry? To buy a new car, that's buy the reason. A new car. Well, could you ask the question to this sentence? He's saving money to buy a new car. I will why? 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 why is he that's saving right. money? Mm -hmm. Why is he saving money to buy a new car? That's the reason uh, for his saving money, okay? And rule number three, after some birth, for, for example, like, Want, need, and learn. She's never learned to. She's never learned to drive. Well, there is like she has never learned to drive. Just a short form. And try not to make a noise. Want, need, learn. As you can see, we use infinitive after these very verbs. Okay. And here they give another kind of list of verbs after which we also can use infinitive. Common verbs which take the infinitive with two. For example, can't or can't. American variant. Afford. Agree, decide, expect, forget, help, hope, learn, need, offer, plan, pretend, promise, refuse, remember, see, try, want, and would like. Well, mm, do you know all these words? What does it mean afford? I can't afford. I can't afford this car. 
means that somebody is short of money to buy a car that he mm. doesn't have enough money. Okay. And what does it mean someone is short of, um, t uh, short of money or run out of money? Was the meaning for those yeah. people know? It means that he doesn't have enough money. Yes. He doesn't have much money to buy a car. No, I like he doesn't have uh, enough money to buy that car. Okay, so cannot afford this car. I cannot afford to go on vacation, I know, to Australia or something. Okay, so the person doesn't have a possibility to do something, uh, usually because of lack of money. Good. Um, well, another verb, uh, well, I guess, need offer, plan, pretend, uh, well, refuse, uh, would like. So all the others, I guess, you know them pretty well. Good. And the last point, use the infinitive without to. After most modal and auxiliary verbs, like I can't drive, we must hurry, and after make and let, my parents don't let me go out much, she always makes me laugh. Um, so, these are general rules about using gerunds and infinitives. And on the right side, you can see some points. So, gerunds and infinitives form the negative with not, for example, not to be, not being. And more verbs take the infinitive than the gerunds, just uh, kind of statistics. And these common verbs can take either the gerund or infinitive with no difference in like begin, continue, prefer, and start. So no, me, no difference in meaning. You can say I begin um, running or I begin to run, and uh, there won't there won't be any difference in meaning. But there are some verbs uh, that can take a gerund or infinitive, and the meaning will be different. For example, try to be on time means make an effort to be on time, and try doing yoga. Here it's kind of a mm, try to do it. Do it to see if you like it, uh, to know if you will continue or not. And another example with remember. Remember to phone him. Don't forget to do that, to do it. And I remember meeting him years ago means that I have a memory of it. I remember just like on a souvenir. Well, souvenir is more French word. So that's uh, these these are the general rules about gerunds and infinitives. Uh, is everything clear where you got some questions? If you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask, please. No questions? No. No questions for now. So now let's uh, jump into exercises. So uh, the first exercise, 5C, under the table, uh, invites us to complete with a gerund or infinitive. So we've got an example here. Smoking is banned in all public places. Number one. Uh, Valentina, you are to stop. It's uh, very expensive to rent a flat in the center. And I'd like you to explain why you use infinitive or the gerund, please. Uh, because I use I use infinitive because uh, I use the verb after adjective. Okay, we use an infinitive after an adjective. That's right. Good. Number two, Althea. Uh, are you afraid of flying? Are you afraid of flying? Why do you use the gerund? Mm, just a moment. Uh, after prepositions. After prepositions. And uh, uh, this question is for uh, Valeri. Are you afraid of flying? Uh, yes, I am. Really? Well, you like traveling. Well, what, what, what is uh, the most comfortable way uh, to, for, of traveling for you? Of course, by airplane. Mm -hmm. But still, but you, you, you are afraid of flying. Um, yeah, um, because when the, when, when the plane starts to take off and when it is landing, mm -hmm. I have a bit of an apprehension because I know that most air crashes happen at this time. Okay, I see. Uh, but I have no choice. You, you know that um, flying is uh, the only way I can get to distant countries uh, within a few hours. That's right. That is fast and rather comfortable. Okay, yeah. uh, somebody, will you uh, continue, please? Number three. I called the restaurant to book a table for tonight. Mm -hmm. So why do you use uh, the infinitive non gerund? Uh, the infinitive is used because here we deal with. Uh, Reason. Yeah. That's right. So why? Well, yeah, what yeah, yeah. better to say than what for? Two? 
to book a table for two nights. Good. Do you do you ever call the restaurant to book a table for for the evening, my lady? Uh, me? Mm -hmm. No, I, I no, I don't. I'm not. Um, mm, I'm not used to going to restaurants. You know. Okay. I okay. prefer to eat what my wife cooks for me, and it's tastier and it's much cheaper. I see. Okay. <laughs> well, there is pleasant and cheaper. Good. What about uh, uh, what about you, Vitaly? Do you ever go to restaurants? Yeah, it's, I try to. To whiz, to to go to the restaurants uh, from times to times. And Why not? When you go, do you uh, call the restaurant to book a table for for the inn? -in? Uh, yes, I do. if it's a very good restaurant and I know that uh, there are a lot of people and everything will, will be uh, full, so the restaurant will be full, so I of course book it. Mm -hmm. it? I see. Okay, Vitaly, a good one with the next sentence, please. Number four. Uh, be, be careful. Uh, don't noise uh, no, when you. Sorry, don't, uh, don't 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 make. No 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 no. When no. It's not don't. You're uh, there is. Uh, uh, ah oh, okay okay sorry. Negative be indicator. careful to uh, to not make a noise. When not to home. not to make. Ah uh, not to make. Uh -huh. make. Not to make. Mm -hmm. And Be careful okay. not to make a noise when you come home tonight. Okay, and why do you use uh, um, infinitive and not the gerund? Because um, of adjective, no? Yeah, due to the adjective, you got careful. Be careful not to mm -hmm. make a noise. Good. Num if I, we got a new student, Tatiana. Hello to you. Hello. How are you feeling? <laughs> Oh, I'm good, but I'm sorry for being late because uh, there was not electricity, there was problem. I see, uh, something happens, don't worry. So join our little discussion, we are discussing the difference in u usage of infinitive and gerunds. So here is a link uh, Mikhail has sent. Uh -huh, yes. Uh, so uh, there is uh, actually um, under the table there are exercises and there is number um, five uh, and I would ask you to try. So, uh -huh, okay. number five, please. Welcome. Uh, she's worried about failing the exam. About failing the exam. Okay, why do you use the gerund and not infinity? Um, particle two or um, participle two? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, why do you use uh, the gerund? So, why cannot I say she's worried about to fail the exam? Oh, oh uh, maybe it's because of preposition. Exactly, that's uh, due mm -hmm. to the preposition. Good, thanks. Number six, uh, Althea, please. Uh, every, everybody went on dancing until after midnight. Mm -hmm. After midnight, okay, so, and explanation? On, preposition on. Preposition, okay, Valentina, you are to continue. Number seven, please. Mm, being an only child is a bit boring. Being an only child is a bit boring, okay? Being, why be, not to be? To be an only child, can I say? Why not? Prove it, I don't believe you. It is a subject, a subject of... Okay, we use it as a subject, so there is why we use the gerund. Um, good, so number eight, my brother and I, my brother and I, number eight, who is the lucky one? Mikhail. Uh, okay, one second. Um, it's easy. Uh, it's easy. It's easy to find a way uh, if you look uh, at the map. It's easy to find a way if you look at a map. Okay, so why do you use to find, not finding? Uh, because, uh, as we use it, uh, we use infinitive after the adjective. The adjective, good. That's well done. Number nine, um, Valeri. He's terrible at learning languages. Mm hmm. The gerund is used because it goes after the preposition at. That's right. Good. Um, and number ten, the last one. Um, well, whose turn is it? Uh, Vitali, please welcome. Uh, why are you learning Spanish? Uh, being able to talk uh, to my in-laws. There are there are uh, they are Argentinian and uh, they don't speak English. Being talk, you said. Being able to talk. Being able to talk. Yep. Why do you use um, um, the gerund? Uh, yeah, actually, we use the gerund. 
Because it's a uh, subject. And well, here we got a kind of um, situational sentence, you know. And here we can talk about some reason. What do you think? Uh -huh. Why are you learning Spanish? Mm -hmm. I learn in Spanish to be able to talk to them. Yeah, here is a kind of tricky sentence because uh, they put uh, a blank, like we, we, we could use the jar at the beginning, but here it's a situational sentence. They give us a context, so it's about reason. So why I learn in Spanish to talk to my in-laws? And who are in-laws? We, we, we had a topic dedicated to family, and there were this word combination, in-laws. Who are in-laws, Valentina? Mm -hmm. Who are in laws? Mm, excuse me, I, I haven't heard you. Haven't heard me? Yes. So who are in laws? In laws. Mm -hmm. Tatiana, who are in laws? I'm sorry, no Russian, please. Um, okay. Uh, maybe the, uh, they are the parents of your husband. Your oh, husband yeah. or your wife's parents. Uh -huh. Okay, Tatiana. Well, it's the first time you're at my class. We have a golden rule number one no Russian. At okay. least uh, uh, try not to speak it as much as possible. You speak English, okay? And rule number two getting ready with a piece of news uh, every class. But actually, I haven't heard any pieces of news. No, I have. Who, who, who said anything or oh, something? I don't remember. Okay, anyway, we'll, we'll come back to this rule number two later, just try not to speak Russian. <laughs> Good. So, uh, that's right. Thank you, Tatiana. So, these are uh, either your husband or your husband's or your wife's uh, um, parents, various in-laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, here the worst um, sentence. Um, it's uh, just a second, verse number seven. Being an only child is a bit boring. Do you agree with it? Uh, 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 Valentina, are you an only child in the family? Mm. Ah, you have some brothers, he said. No, no, I have a brother. I have two no, brothers. Who is the only child in the family? No one. No everyone has got one. some brothers and some siblings. You've got everyone who has... You know the word siblings? Siblings means... I do. Brother, great. Okay, good. Uh, so siblings are brothers and sisters. So has everyone got some siblings where... There are some, there is someone who's got who who has no um, brothers, neither sisters. Uh, but do you have any brothers or sisters? I've got uh, two junior brothers. Okay, I see. Okay, so what do you think about this sentence? Being an only child is a is a bit boring. Do you agree with it or not? And give your I don't know comments on it. Uh, I'll hear. I think it's uh, boring because. If you haven't any brothers and sisters... Yeah, come on, I feel sorry for interrupting, but you really like making this mistake if, if you haven't. If you don't have, or if you haven't got, or if you have... If you haven't got, mm -hmm. if you haven't got any brothers and uh, sisters, it's sisters. very, very um, awful. It's very, very awful, okay. Yeah. It's really boring. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Tatiana, what do you think on the matter? Do you think that uh, being an only child in a family is a it's really boring. It's absolutely mm, horrible. Uh, I can't agree that it's awful, but uh, um, of course I agree that it's um, much boring, boring than being than having a brother, for example, as me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got a brother. Do you yeah. get on well with your brother? <laughs> yeah, we are friends. You are friends. That's good. Nice. Okay, so uh, there is the first exercise. Now let's pass to exercise B. You have to complete the sentences with work, to work, or working. We've got an example here. Regret not working hard when I was at school, but it's too late. Um, so number one. Um, well, uh, but anyway, will you come to stop, please? I spent all weekend uh, working on the computer. Mm -hmm. So, working on the computer, why do you use the gerund? Uh, I think it's a possible, isn't it? Uh, working on the computer? Yeah. Is it a possible? Uh, well, uh, working on the computer, well, here it's, yeah, kind of, you're right. That's right, okay, good. Let's go on, number two, uh, Vitali. 
Um, I've decided to work abroad next year. I have decided to work. To work, yes. Mm -hmm. So why do you say here to work? Mm. I decide. Well, here remember there is a list of verbs after which you should use the infinitive. Look no. at the table like decide, expect, forget. Uh, yeah, yeah. After this word, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Next one, number three. Um, Mikhail. Number three. Uh, you, you must. must okay, I see. Uh, you must. Uh, to work harder. Uh, 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 sorry, you must. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, one second. You must. Uh, uh, you must. Uh, mm -hmm. No. You must. You must, and then. Uh, to work. No. Uh, oh, okay. After uh, modal verbs, you can never use. Uh, particle two. I can I can do something. I must do something. Let me do something. Let me to do something. Okay. You, you must work. In. Working or work. 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 Use the infinitive without to after modal verbs and must is one of them. You must work harder. Okay, I understand. Uh, you must work. Uh, Work other you want to get uh, promoted. Promoted, exactly. Good number four. Mm, Tatiana, please. My boss often makes me work late. Mm hmm. Is it really so? Does your boss make you work late, Tatiana? <laughs> no, because I'm a student. Okay, I see. Well, and don't, you don't work. Do you want uh, um, your future boss? Uh, to make you work late, Tatiana. It's impossible. Who who can want it? Who can want it? Well, there are some people who love working. No. <laughs> not me. Workaholics. <laughs> That's not about you. Okay. So why do you use here? Um, my boss often makes me work late. Why not to make? Um, makes me make you to work. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, make is a model verb here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. So, and we use very infinitive. Good. Next one. Um, of. Uh, he's he isn't very good at working in a team. Yeah, at working in a team. Good. So here we got this preposition at work. Yes. Good. Uh, six. Uh, um, Valentina. Mm, I don't mind working on Saturdays if I can have a day off during the week. Mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, Huh? After the expression, I don't mind. I don't mind doing something good. Well, the next sentence, number six, number six, not number six, number seven, um, Valeri. He's gone to the UK to work in his uncle's shop. Mm -hmm. um, good. Would you like to go to the UK to work in a shop? <laughs> <laughs> in a shop? Um, I don't know, really. I, I, I'm interested in going to the UK to master my English. Oh, your English but, uh, is uh, almost but, perfect, I would yeah, say. Thank like, you. But that, uh, your accent is very British, I would say. Um, that's really nice. So <laughs> I, I, I guess that it will be really easy for you to master your British to, to make it just perfect. Yeah. It's my dream to find myself in an English-speaking country and to uh, make it really perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, you'd like to go to the UK to master your English um, and don't, don't you mind working in a kind of a shop? If you were offered such a job, would you accept it? Um, I would, actually. I would. I'm, okay. not, sh I'm not sure, but I, maybe I would. Mm -hmm. I see. Good, thanks. Well, next sentence, number eight, Vitali. Uh, working with members of your family can be quite difficult, and I agree with it. Mm -hmm. You agree with it? And what about gerund? Why have you used the gerund, not the infinitive? Because, 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 uh, mm, subject, yes, of, of here, the end. Here, here, there is a subject. Okay, number nine. Um, number nine, uh, whose turn is it? Um, 
Oh, well, I'll see you, please. Uh, my husband promised not to work on my birthday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and last one, number 10, uh, Tatiana. I used to work in a restaurant when I was a student. Do you work uh, in a restaurant? Now you are a student, Tatiana. No. You don't work as a student uh, in a restaurant. Okay. Well, and so where, to, where, where do you study? What do you study? Where do you learn? I uh, study English. Okay. So are you going to be a teacher of English? Mm, yes. Really? Oh, that's nice. So you're going to be my, kind of my colleague. Do you, do you, do you study? I hope. Do you study any other foreign languages? Um, German, German, but uh, I will study it in a year. Oh, I see. Are you a one, a, what, the first year student? Uh, yeah, I finished the first year. Mm -hmm, I see. Okay, so you could practice in German with Valeri. Okay. <laughs> okay, because as far as I remember, Valeri speaks a little bit of German. Am I right, Valeri? Uh, yes, you are. You are. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm waiting for German teachers on this website, so okay. for me, Hey, that will be uh, awesome. Yeah, that's good. So, Mikhail, uh, think, uh, think about uh, this. <laughs> okay. Look for some good yeah, teachers. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> Actually, I had uh, my, my elder sister, she's a teacher of German, but now she lives in Poland and uh, uh, she looks after her baby. I mean, well, she's got a daughter. But, well, maybe she won't be against to teach you some German. <laughs> I, will, I will talk to her. Anyway. Well, let's go on. So that were, these are exercise. Well, as, as far as you can see, um, it's not that difficult. Just don't forget, please, Mikhail and others, uh, not to use uh, particle to after model verbs. And so all the other rules, it's pretty understandable, clear enough. Uh, so follow the rules, keep them in mind, and don't make any mistakes when using gerunds or infinitives. And now let's go further. Well, um. I don't have much time, but what shall we do? Well, uh, I guess we will pass the reading parts. You will do that at home. Uh, that's kind of interesting. You will have to uh, complete you know, some questionnaire and then uh, understand uh, what kind of job is better for you, the right job for you, OK? And there are some explanations. And I'll pass, uh, let's pass to page three, listening parts. So you're going to hear Jessica and her teacher, Adam, talking about how she did in her four weeks on the pretenders. Listen to each week and answer the questions. So uh, on the left, you can see three questions. So we'll listen in parts. There are one, two, three, four parts. And then we'll answer the questions. So get ready to listen. Are you ready? Yeah. OK, so let's get started. 5.14. Week 1. When I got to the studio on the first day, I was really nervous. I met my teachers, Adam and Sally, and they were very nice to me, but I could see that they thought it was going to be impossible to teach me to be a reporter in just a month. The problem with Jessica at the beginning was that she was too shy and too nice. Political reporters need to be hard, almost aggressive sometimes. And I've never met anyone less aggressive than Jessica. And also, she knew nothing about politics. She knew who the Prime Minister was, but not much else. I spent the first week watching lots of political interviews on TV, and Adam and Sally taught me how to speak more clearly and more confidently. In the evenings, they made me read the political sections of all the newspapers. It was very boring. At the end of the week, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. So there is the first uh, uh, week, and we've got some questions. So the first question, um, mm, what did Adam and Sally think of Jessica? That question goes to Vitaly. Mm, they, they think that uh, Jessica is, so thought that Jessica is boring teacher, yes? Uh, Jessica was a boring teacher? No. Oh, mm, I'm afraid you have misunderstood a little bit the record. Yeah, Jessica maybe. Here. Okay, who's got another idea? So what do they think about Jessica? Um, I understand she was uh, very shy and sometimes she was aggressive. <laughs> she was very kind and sometimes very aggressive. 
Yes, I'm sure. So she was a kind of psycho, like kind and then aggressive, kind and then aggressive. Well, well, okay. Well, anyway, thanks for your idea. Who's got another idea? Uh, Valeria, what do you think? I agree that uh, Jessica was shy in Adam and Sarah's opinion. Uh huh. And what about aggressive? What about mean um, aggressive? No, she wasn't aggressive. It wasn't aggressive at all. She was shy and sometimes too I'm nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. So that was the problem. Uh, she was uh, nice, uh, too nice sometimes, and very shy. Okay. Yeah, and she should be um, hard mm -hmm. in some hard situations. Yeah. yeah. Why? What? What? What is uh, the, what? What is the profession um, are they talking about? What the profession are they talking about? Reporter. Reporter. That's it. Not a teacher, did that, okay? So it's about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, next question. Question number two. Um, let's read it out. So, what did she learn to do this week, uh, Althea? Did you get what she learned to do this week, the first week? Uh, according uh, to Adam, this one. Uh, uh, question number two. What did she learn to? To, 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 to do this week. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It's week one. It is week two. I, I, I will. Yeah, according to Adam, what two problems did Jessica have? Uh, according to Adam, what two problems did Jessica have? Uh huh. So actually, we, we almost have given the answer, but still. So, so she, she was, was too. She was nice and uh, shy. Yeah. She, Shyness. She she was shining like the sun. Shy. Yeah. So she was too nice and shy. Not aggressive enough. Mm hmm. Okay. And what else? There was another um, weak point of hers. Well, what else? What about politics? Was she good at politics? No. No. She wasn't. So she didn't. Know much about politics. Politics. That's it. That was another problem. Okay. Good. Question number three. Um. Let's uh, read it out. So, uh, what three things did Jessica have to do this week, Tatiana? Oh, uh, this one is difficult for me because mm -hmm. I haven't heard well. I sh I heard that there was a column. Uh, but I don't remember which one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe someone could help you. Uh, so, um, who can help? What three things did Jessica have to do this week? Who knows the answer? Come on. Valide, what about you? I'm sorry, but I haven't caught that okay. uh, part. Okay, so let's listen once again to um, get better, okay? Yeah. 5.14. Week 1. When I got to the studio on the first day, I was really nervous. I met my teachers, Adam and Sally, and they were very nice to me, but I could see that they thought it was going to be impossible to teach me to be a reporter in just a month. The problem with Jessica at the beginning was that she was too shy and too nice. Political reporters need to be hard, almost aggressive sometimes. And I've never met anyone less aggressive than Jessica. And also, she knew nothing about politics. She knew who the Prime Minister was, but not much else. I spent the first week watching lots of political interviews on TV, and Adam and Sally taught me how to speak more clearly and more confidently. In the evenings, they made me read the political sections of all the newspapers. It was very boring. At the end of the week, I was exhausted. So now, after listening for the second time to the record, uh, you could answer the question. So, what did you learn? What did you, what did you learn? What three? What three things did Jessica have to do this week? Who is ready to answer? Uh, so Jessica had to read uh, uh, political sections of newspapers. That's right. What else? She what? had to s uh, learn how to speak clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, surely. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing is. Now the third thing is someone else maybe will tell me. Anybody? 
Sorry, I, I don't didn't hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, actually, um, he had to also uh, not only read political um, sections in newspapers, but also um, watch political interviews on TV. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's actually, well, mm, something very close to reading, but a little bit different. However, there's this thing she had to do. And the fourth question, how did she feel at the end of the week, uh, Althea? How did she feel at the end of the week? At uh, the end of the week, she... Felt? Felt boring. Bored. Not boring, but bored. Bored. And... Only... Exhausted. Exhausted as well. That's right. She felt bored, maybe, and exhausted. Okay, now let's listen to the second week. I'm going 15. Adam and Sally, I had to change. Okay. Get your microphones muted, please. Mm -hmm. 5.15. Week 2. Adam and Sally said I had to change my image for TV. So I had my hair cut and coloured, and I got new, smarter clothes. I must say I liked my new look. I spent the week learning how to interview someone in front of a camera. Then came Jessica's first big challenge. The Prime Minister was arriving home after a visit to the USA. She had to wait outside number 10 Downing Street with the other journalists and try to ask him a question. It was a disaster. I was so nervous, I was shaking. There were a lot of other journalists pushing and shouting. They didn't let me get near the Prime Minister. I tried to ask my question, but he didn't hear me. I felt really stupid. Okay, well, there is the second week and our question. How did Jessica change her image, uh, Tatiana? Uh, she has her hair cut and colored. Mm -hmm. and 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 also clothes. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of clothes uh, did she get? Did she buy? Uh, more modern, maybe. Mm -hmm. Smarter clothes. More modern. Uh. Mm -hmm. Good. Question number two. Um, what did she have to do this week? Uh, no, no, sorry. Again, no, the, the wrong week. What did she learn to do this week? Yeah, that's right. Okay, Valentina. Mm -hmm. What did she learn to do this week? Mm, I can't answer. Okay. So we can't answer. I see. Well, that's okay. Don't worry. Someone will help us. And who will help us? Daddy will. Will you? I um, I don't know what was the problem today. I that's maybe okay. uh, kind of complicated. Uh, maybe kind of yeah. It's, okay. uh, maybe it's maybe make some how to to learn uh, learn to make some interview. You know. Mm, yes, that's yep. right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, actually, she learned uh, uh, how to interview someone in, in, in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Question number three. Uh, so, uh, what did she have to do at 10 Down Street, um, Lady? To ask questions. I'm sorry? Nice question. Yeah, uh, Valeri, your microphone is muted. It's off. Can you switch it on if you are here? No. Okay, is not here now. Maybe busy. Okay, so who can answer? Um, Mikhail, maybe. Uh, Last questions. Question. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a uh, seven question. Yes. Uh, question. What? Yeah, question three, seven. Yeah. What did she have to do at t ten Downtown Street? Uh, she, uh, she, try, uh, she she tried to. She had to. She have to uh, try uh, uh, to make interview with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. That's right, you have to ask the Prime Minister some questions. Okay. That's right, okay, number eight, my brother and I, my brother and I, number eight. Question number eight goes uh, to, well, was, was she successful? Why was she successful? Why not? Uh, so, uh, Whose turn is it now? Um, Valentina, maybe? Mm, Can you give an answer to this question? Nope. 
So was he successful? I was. was he was or she wasn't? She was. He was or she wasn't? Uh, okay, in your opinion, she was, but Althea disagrees and says she wasn't. She wasn't, she wasn't because uh, she, wa uh, she wants uh, to ask questions, but uh, he... Want, sorry, she wanted to ask some questions. Yes, but uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, hadn't hear her. Didn't hear her? Didn't hear her, yeah. Didn't hear. Why didn't he hear her? Because uh, there was very noisy. It was very. He was very noisy. Or there. Yeah, it was there. Very, uh -huh, it was very noisy there, and there were a lot of other reporters and journalists asking questions, yelling, crying, shouting. Mm, that's right. Okay. Next question. Um. Well, actually, hmm, there is week two. Let's listen to week number three. Five point sixteen. Week three. Yes. Okay. Are you ready to listen? Five point sixteen. Week three. Jessica was finally making some progress. She was more relaxed. This week she had to interview a politician from the Conservative Party in the studio. In the beginning it was fine. But then I made a stupid mistake. So could you tell us what the Labour Party are going to do about the, oh, sorry, I, I mean the Conservative Party, uh, what they're going to do about the compromises that they were making? I said the Labour Party instead of the Conservative Party, and after that I was really nervous again. We all make mistakes sometimes. Jessica just has to learn to carry on and not lose her confidence. Mm -hmm. That's it, so that's all with week three. Nine, question nine. What did Adam think about Jessica? She had a progress. Sorry, she, she had a progress. She, she has a progress. She mm. has a, had a progress. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah, actually, she, she becomes more relaxed. More? More what? More relaxed. More relaxed. Okay, that's right, exactly. So he thought that she was finally making some progress and felt more relaxed. Good. Question number 10. Where, what did she have to do this week? Um, Valeri, are you here? Or you have left for a while? I guess Valeri has left for a while. Okay, so uh, Vitari? Um. So it's uh, so maybe uh, she had she have to um, I don't know maybe I, I really don't didn't catch it and it's okay okay it's okay so uh, who can help us with question number ten? Buddy, you are back. Turn on your microphone. Yeah, but Buddy, your microphone is off. You should switch it on. So let's us hear you. Are you saying something? No. I mean, no, I guess Valeri is saying something, but we cannot hear. So, uh, Valeri, your microphone is off. You should switch it on. <coughs> it, oh, okay. On uh, the side here, in the, in, at, at the top part of the side, you've got the microphone. You should switch it on. No, on, on the screen. Please push uh, the button on the screen. It's uh, open, though. On the top of, of the screen. Okay, now I guess it's okay. So, um, have have you listened to the, the third week, Valeri? You have some problems. I guess so. Well, now I cannot hear you. Unfortunately, I don't know what's what what is going on. Okay, try to fix the problem, please. We need you. <laughs> so, um, who, who, who is here to answer the question? Tatiana, will you be so kind to answer the question? What uh, did she do? What uh, did she do? She had to organize the party. A party? Really? Yes. No. What kind of party? <laughs> mm. oh, I know where you, where you, where you, th you think she, she had to organize a kind of party. Well, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't about, you know, party. They're not like uh, having fun. It was about political party. So what did she uh, have to do, Althea? Uh, I missed. Okay, so she 
had to interview a politician from the conservative party, okay? That's yeah. what she yeah. had to do. She okay. had to interview, to, to interview uh, with a representative, actually, um, a representative of a conservative party, a politician. Okay, good. Uh, question number 11. Number 11, my brother and I. Okay, um, what mistake did she make? What mistake did she make? Um, who is ready to answer? But Eddie is not here and not is not is not here yet. Are you? Something is wrong there. So who wants to answer? Mikhail, maybe Vitali. Come on, guys. I need. I don't hear it. You don't have an answer. I don't hear the question. <laughs> You haven't heard the question. Well, actually, it is written in your question. Yeah. So, uh, what mistake did she make when when interviewing a politician? Okay, let's see. Yeah. She mixed up the uh, name of the party. That's right. Exactly. So uh, that's what she, that was the mistake she she made. Okay. And uh, the last question from this section: What did Adam say that Jessica needed to do? Mm -hmm. Keep calm and relax, and uh, every everybody um, do mistake, and that's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. Makes mistakes, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, she had to uh, to keep calm, carry on, and not lose her confidence. You know, because sometimes yes. when mm -hmm. people make some mistakes, they think, "Oh my God, oh I was was horrible. No, I I I won't continue. I won't go on." But mm -hmm. That we should keep on trying and um, just remember and keep in mind that to err is human, everyone makes mistakes. Okay, good. Let's listen to uh, section four. Well, I mean, uh, week number four. 5.17. Week four. I spent the last week preparing for the test. It was going to be a live interview with the Minister of Education. There would be three professional reporters and me all asking him questions. I'd done lots of research, so although I was nervous, I felt well prepared. Minister, many people think that the real reason why there aren't enough teachers is because their salaries are so low. Are you proposing to increase teachers' salaries? Well, let's not forget that salaries are much higher today than they were under the previous government. Yes, but you haven't answered my question. Are you going to increase them? Well, we're planning to spend a lot more money on education in the next two years. Is that a yes or a no? There are no immediate plans to increase teachers' salaries. So it's a no, then. Thank you, Minister. Mm -hmm. When it was all over came the worst part. I had to wait while the judges decided which of us they thought wasn't a professional reporter. The judges gave their verdict. And incredibly, none of the three realized that Jessica wasn't a professional. She did very, very well. Who knows? Maybe one day soon you'll be seeing her on TV. And this time, she'll be a real reporter, not pretending. It was a great experience, and I was pleased how I did. But actually, I wouldn't like to change jobs. I'm much happier working in the library. Okay, that's it. So the last part for uh, week four. And the first question about the fourth week is number 13. What was Jessica's final test and how did she feel about it? So the question goes to Tatiana. Um, her test uh, was to interview uh, the Prime Minister of Education. That's uh, right. The Minister of Education. Yeah, the, the Minister of Education. Okay, good. And uh, um, how did you feel about it, Althea? Uh, Althea, how did you feel about it? About what? About, about, uh, about the final test. Uh, about interviewing the Minister of Education. She was... Uh, she was glad. She was glad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? How did she feel? She, uh, she, uh, she was glad at the end, but uh, before interviewing uh, minister of the Minister of Education, how did she feel? Uh, Valentina? Uh, she was nervous. 
you felt nervous, but mm. but he was mm, but mm. he was well prepared. Oh, sure, sure. He was well prepared. Uh, well, uh, despite the fact she felt nervous, she she was well prepared. Okay. Um, did the interview go well for Jessica? Why why not, Vitali? Um, it was good. Okay, it went well. Uh, it went well, yes. And why? Uh, why it's hard to say. I just remember that um, uh, someone tell, told that um, uh, she do she did some mistake, but uh, she pretty pretty well now. And she made some mistakes. Some made some mistake, but uh, she is she uh, is uh, pretty well now, so it's well it's uh, better. But at the final test, she didn't make any mistakes. Um, she felt nervous, okay, but that's not considered to be a mistake. Well, uh, she, well, she felt her nervous a little bit, but well prepared, and she did well. She, so why? Uh, as I understand, she interrupts uh, the professor. Well, she didn't actually interrupt him, but she made him answer the question. So she asked the question. Uh, the minister was trying to avoid answering, but still, she made him answer the question. And she got the answer, yes or no. He tried to say yes, but no, she said, yes or no. He said, no, this is so, so no. But she made him answer the question. That means that the interview went well for her. Good. Uh, next question. Mm, did the judges realize that Jessica wasn't a professional reporter? Um, Mikhail. Uh, I, um wasn't Did the judges realize that Jessica who, who was not? Who the judges? I, I judges, like, yes. you know, those who decide to kill or not to kill. Okay, you <laughs> to say sentence like, to prison or not to sentence to prison. Okay, okay I understand. Judges. Um, not all yeah. the names. Those, those who know. Because, uh, they, uh, because she... No, you uh, cannot start a sentence from because. Okay. Since... Uh, uh, could you repeat? You, you cannot start the sentence from be coerced. Okay. Uh, the, the, the judges uh, uh, think uh, that Jessica uh, wasn't a professional reporter because uh, she, uh, she tried to, um, how to say it, it's uh, like, uh, speak. speak uh, uh, how to say it? It's, uh, I don't know. What do you want to say? So, judges, you said judges thought Jessica was not a professional reporter because she made some mistakes. Uh, because um, uh, she like uh, turned off uh, the speech of speaker. Uh, interrupted because she interrupted. Uh, interrupt. Interrupt. Yes. Interrupt. 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 Well, um, I would disagree with you. Uh, Who has got another opinion? Who has got another opinion? No one. Variri is not here yet. Vitari, Althea, come on, I need someone. <laughs> uh, none of three judges had understood that she wasn't professional. So they they so to 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 put it in uh, other terms. Okay. They thought she was a good reporter. She was yeah, professional. That's right. Thank you, Tatiana. So that's it. So they thought she was a good reporter. It was really kind of unexpected um, to hear, but that's what they um, said. So um, next question, actually the last one, was Jessica, uh, would Jessica like to become a reporter? Why or why not? Vitaly. Yes, uh, she want want she wants like or wanted. Uh, she would like to become a, a reporter. Hmm. Are you sure? She would like to become a reporter. It was rather clear. She said at the end of the records. What did she say at the end of the records, Althea? Sure. Hmm. Okay. Althea. She said that she didn't want to change her work. Didn't want to change her because. 
And because she likes it, she likes it. She liked what? Uh, her job. And what was her job? Um, I don't know what is uh, what uh, her job let, is. Let, let me uh, make you uh, hear. I mean, just this very word. Not pretending. Like to change job experience, and I was pleased how I did, but actually. I wouldn't like to change jobs. I'm much happier working in the library. <laughs> so that's it. Li librarian. librarian. So she likes to work in, in, in the library. That's her cup of tea. And working as a reporter is not her cup of tea. OK, so yeah, I can see it was, uh, has been pretty hard to understand maybe some details and so on. But you should do that. It's really important. Try to pay attention to all the details when listening. Because as you can see, and I guess you maybe you have noticed that uh, they used some gerunds and infinitive when in describing uh, everything dealing with this story. Okay, guys, so that'll do with this part. We will finish with uh, some expressions I prepared for you dealing with a gerund and in actually gerund, some expressions with a gerund. So the first one. Um, uh, Vitali, will you read it out, please? It's no. It's no use crying over spilled milk. Okay, how do you understand? I mean, actually, I guess I gave you this uh, idiom uh, before when we talked about food. So it's no use crying over spilled milk. Give me. How do you understand it? It's Ooh, not. Really it's not mm, I don't know how it's. What it means. So, who has got any ideas? It's no use crying over spilled milk. It's maybe um, when you do something uh, bad uh, for uh, when you're cooking and it's not uh, very good, so it doesn't matter. Try again, maybe. No. Um, you know, maybe when it's not just no, not just cooking. Maybe it's it's uh, yeah, well, everything. So when yes, everything. when you have done something. So you shouldn't regret. It has been done. So you cannot change it. So if you have spilled the milk, you shouldn't I don't know, keep on crying. Oh my God, oh my God, milk, milk. Mm. What should I do? I don't have any milk. Oh my God, milk. So it has already been spilled. So what for crying? It will, it will, it will, it will um, do any good. So just put up and go on. There is no need to regret if something has happened. Just put up any good one. That is the idea, okay? Yeah. Good. Number two, it would be worse giving it a try. Okay, I have read it. Let it be. So it would be worse giving it a try. What's the meaning of this very sentence, this expression? Who's got an idea? Uh, Tatiana. It would be worse giving it a try. Okay. I'm a little puzzled, but. I'm sorry? Uh, puzzled. Are you a little bit puzzled? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but maybe uh, maybe it means that uh, you don't have to uh, give another chance to somebody. Oh, uh, maybe on the contrary. It would be uh -huh. worth giving a try. Like for example, um, Okay, let me think of a good example. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Well, it, it's kind of dangerous to go there because I've heard that uh, some um, bag eggs are hanging out there. So, but it uh, would be a worse. Uh, it would be worse giving it a try because it might help you to find the friend you've been looking for. Maybe a little bit complicated example. Uh, anyway, the idea is that uh, sometimes you hesitate, you you are in 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 doubt, so you don't know whether to do or not. But it's a good thing to do uh, because it might give you something good. It you might uh, find uh, uh, some I know positive sides in doing it. I don't know what example I give you. It would be worth giving it a try. Um, okay, for example, a person uh, has failed a lot of exams, you know, a uh, person w would like to enter exam, and so, so the person has failed all the exams in three universities, and uh, today is the last day a person can um, uh, try to pass other exams in the fourth university, 
person is really exhausted, desperate, and just uh, doesn't want anything, like a kind of a, uh, I don't know, on, on, on the edge of some crisis, and a friend of his or her says, come on, I know you are exhausted, I know you have tried to enter all the three universities, you have failed, but let's give it a try, come on, it would be worth giving it a try, maybe you will enter. So make an effort, do it, and it will help you to, to, to enter. Who knows? <clears throat> Nobody knows. So that is a kind of explanation. Have you got? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And what about others? Because I, I just I'm looking at everyone, and I can say, hmm, yeah. hmm, hmm, <laughs> something like that. Like meaning that you haven't understood, or you have. I understand. Really? No, I, I really want you to understand. Maybe I will find another example. Valentina, what about you? I understand it. Okay, great. Uh, Tatiana? Mm, I understood, yeah. Um, I doubt you have. <laughs> okay, anyway, well, try to try to get it maybe a little later. Um, so, you should... Uh, the film, for example, the film... Another example. Well, the film is not very good. Uh, it's not that... Uh, Mm, it's not very. It's not a, a, a thick. It's not a action movie, but uh, actors are good and music is wonderful. So it's worth seeing the movie. There, there is something that um, that would would you, would make you like it. So you can like it for some other reasons. So it's worth. It is worth watching the movie. It, were, it is worth seeing the movie. So there are something that uh, could make you do that or that. Okay, so that is number two. It, it, it would be worth giving it a try. Just You have to understand that uh, you can use this construction not only with the verb give but also with others. It would be worth doing something. Or it is worth doing something. It is, oh, I, I, say, I have remembered another example. Um, for example, life is difficult. It's extremely difficult. It's uh, uh, we also always have a lot of problems, stress, uh, um, daily routine, and so on. But um, besides it, moreover, there are some things that are very beautiful, nice, instant, that make us inspired. So life is worth living because there are things that can make us happy and, uh, I don't know, good. Okay? Yep. <laughs> okay, good. And the last sentence. There is no point in arguing. Well, here I guess this one is clear. What does it mean? There, there is no point in arguing. You don't need to argue. You don't need to argue. No reason. What for? That is stupid. That is it's not sensitive. important. Sorry? It's not important sir, to argue because of. It's not fact. important. There is a kind of senseless. So no sense. No, no, no reason for. Um, okay. So no. Uh, it's no. No point in. And then you use uh, any verb in gerund. It's no use. Uh, I'm sorry. It's no point in. Uh, give me any examples, Vitaly. It's no. It's no point. Uh, oh, there is in, no point in. In laughing, I, I don't know. It's no point in laughing because they uh, don't understand the sense of humor or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And other, or maybe making laugh or joking. I would. I would better. Uh, because those people there, like, my, they never understand uh, my jokes. Okay, uh, another example, mm, Valentina. There is no point in. <coughs> there is no point in hating it. In in doing what? In hating. In hating. Okay, very nice, very good. Uh, out there, it's no point in. There is no point in. Uh, it's no point in. in uh, no point. Uh, take care for him. In starting what? Just a moment. It's no point in, in carefuling. Carefuling? Yeah. In, point, uh, in, take, take in taking yeah. care of yeah. him. There is no point in taking care of him because he is too selfish and never appreciates uh, what you do for him. Okay. Um, Tatiana, your example. There is no point in... Uh, in being upset because of weather. Great. There is no point of being upset in general uh, of weather, of uh, some, sorry my French, some jerks, you know, some people that are really not very good, um, bad people, bad acts. <laughs> okay, and uh, the last example, Mikhail, your turn. There is no point in... 
there is no point in uh, in asking in asking yeah. in asking me questions. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'm tired. There is no point asking me questions now. Okay, I see. Good. Thanks for your examples. I hope that it was, uh, it has been useful for you. So thanks for coming to my class. Uh, welcome to join my class next time. Actually, tomorrow. Uh, so I wish you to have a nice evening as usual. Have uh, non sleep, sleep tight. Have sweet dreams, and hope to see you next time. So goodbye for now. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.